Hi all, this is Alan with Bothell STEM Coach, and today we're doing some more AP Physics 1 uh, free response questions. We've been focusing on rotation for this series, and here's an angular momentum related problem. So um, I'm going to read it real quick this time and just go through the problem and see if there's anything that um, I need to give to you, because some of these questions are a little different than the AP Physics 1 format now, and some they require some knowledge that you may not have. So two identical spheres, each of mass m, are fast to opposites of the rod of length 2l. The system is initially at rest with horizontal bug of mass 3m. Let's determine the torque, uh, determine the linear acceleration after the bug lands. Uh, OK, uh, you're going to need to know the rotational inertia. OK, the rotational inertia for this problem is going to be um, ml squared plus ml squared plus so um, is equal to 2 ml squared this is the rotational inertia without the bug without bug and once the bug lands on it um, it his it's going to be um, 5 ml squared with the bug okay so at this point, I'm going to pause. I, I'd say I'm not going to pause it. You can pause the video, attempt to do the problem on your own, and use these for the rotational inertias for your equations. Okay. So determine the torque about the axis immediately after the bug lands on the sphere. Well, let's, let's, do, the, let's do my own free body diagram over here. Um, The rod has no mass, so we're going to do the free body diagram. First, I'm going to have mg on this side. I'm going to have mg on this side. Free to rotate of a frictionless horizontal axis through the center. OK, so there's some point of rotation here. There's some normal force that's going to keep it from like sliding vertically. It's like hanging on the wall. And then on, also on this side, I have a 3mg. Um, acting on it. Okay, so those are all the forces. Now, this is the point of rotation. We're going to use this as the point of rotation. And um, each force exerts a torque. So to calculate like the torque, so this is part A, to calculate the net torque, each force times a distance. And I have to choose which one is positive and which one is negative. I'm going to say positive is counterclockwise and negative. So if a torque causes a it to rotate this way, I'm going to say it's a positive torque. And if it causes it to rotate this way, I'm going to say it's a negative torque. Now, this is the point of rotation. This is distance L. This is distance L. This mg is causing it to rotate clockwise. See, like this force downward, it's going to try to pull the, the rod to rotate clockwise. So that's going to be a negative torque, negative mg times L, because the r vector is already perpendicular to the force vector. And then these forces cause it to rotate clockwise, so I'm going to add it. So I have this one, mgl. And then I have 3mgl, which is uh, from the mass of the bug. So if I add these all together, I get 3mgl. So that's my net torque. Determine the ang Part B, determine the angular acceleration of the rod sphere bug system immediately after the bug lands. So once the bug lands, this is the net torque. Net torque is equal to I alpha. The rotational inertia is 5 ml squared times alpha, and that equal to 3 mgl. And I can solve for alpha. The m's cancel. One of the l's cancel. So I get alpha is in just divide by 5l. So 3 fifths mg over l. That would be the angular acceleration. So now the rod sphere bug system swings about the axis. At the instant the rod is vertical, as shown above, determine each of the following. So it's going to rotate now, and it's going to be vertical. Determine the angular speed of the bug, the angular momentum of the system, and um, OK. For this one, um, for angular speed, what I'm going to do is conservation of energy, because the torque changes like this is the torque right at like this is this thing is under constant torque because if I were to draw like like say partially after it's partially uh, rotated a bit um, see now my forces are are not perpendicular to the R vector right so it's not going to be this 3 mgl 
it's going to be it's going to vary because my my the torque's different and especially when it's vertical there's no net torque acting on the system because all the forces are sort of in the same direction as the r vector so because it's not a constant torque i can't use like kinematics right kinematics for an algebra based physics class which is ap physics 1 um, you only know to use kinematics under constant acceleration or constant uh, angular acceleration but the angular acceleration is not constant in here. So we have to use conservation of energy. So I want to look at the energy of the system when it's like this. We'll call this state 1 and then when it's state 2. So in state 1, the energy of the system, it has no rotation because the bug just landed. Um, so it has no um, kinetic energy in terms of um, that, that kind of thing, but it does have um, uh, potential energy. Okay, and for potential energy, you always want to establish a baseline. We're going to say this is h equals zero. So it's potent gravitational potential energy is, what is this, r? Oh, no, it's l. Okay, so its energy at this state is 2 mgl because I have MGL here, MGH, you know, potential energy is MGH uh, here and in, in here. Then it has to equal the energy in, in state two. And at state two, first let's do the potential energy. This guy has no potential energy. Oh, actually it's not two MG, it's five MGL because there's a three M over here and an M over here. So, it made a mistake there. That would be five MGL. That equals the energy when it's now vertical. When it's vertical, this has no gravitational potential energy because it's at the minimum height of zero. This is at a height 2L, so this is mg, 2MGL. But So the potential energy is different. Where that energy went was into the rotational energy of this system. Okay. Um, One half I omega squared. Now, this is 2 mgl, this is 1 half i, so it's 5 ml squared, and omega is v over r, that's v over l uh, squared, okay? So if I if I multiply this out, you see the v squareds are going to this l squared is going to cancel with this l. So this is really two mgl plus one half times five m v squared. And you might recognize that this looks just like kinetic energy, and that's that's the relationship between um, rotational and kinetic energy. Is is it's another it's another way of looking at the kinetic energy of every piece that's moving. Okay, so you could have looked at this as kinetic energy. You say, well, I have, these are both moving at the same velocity because they're the same distance away. And this is one half 3mv squared, and this is one half uh, mv squared. So, oh, I should have gotten four. Mm. Oh, this is 4m down here. One half 4mv squared plus one half mv squared. Okay, anyway. Um, so that's equal to 5mgl, and now I can solve for v. Right? Oh, they wanted the angular speed of the bug. Uh, so I shouldn't have solved for V. I should have solved for, I should have just left it as omega. Because they want the angular speed of the bug. Omega squared. So then I have, if I move this to the other side, I have 3 mgl is equal to 5 halves ml squared omega squared. The masses cancel, uh, and one of these L's cancel. And so omega squared is equal to 6 fifths, because I multiply by 2 fifths on both sides, um, g over l. And so omega is equal to the square root of 6 fifths g over l. So that's the angular speed. Angular momentum is just uh, i times omega. The i was 5 ml squared times omega, which is this, square root of 6 fifths g over l. Um, the magnitude and direction of the force that must be exerted on the bug by the sphere to keep the bug from being thrown off the sphere. Okay, so now, now that the, this, this bug is moving in a circular path, um, 
I gotta keep him on, right? I, I, I need a force to keep him on the circular path. Something has to push him upward. So it's an upward force to keep him going on this because it's a centripetal. It has to be some kind of uh, force acting, pointing him toward the center. Um, for that one, it's a circular motion related question. The f um, let's draw a free body diagram. I'm gonna I'm gonna scroll down to make room there and so I'm gonna say well let's draw a free body diagram of the bug he's got 3 mg acting down him down because he weighs 3 m and I need some force here and the net force so I, I he needs to have a centripetal acceleration towards the center to keep him in a circular path right it's got to be directed upward so the net force is F minus 3 mg that would have to equal m sorry not m his his mass which is 3 m times the acceleration. What kind of acceleration is he feeling? Centripetal acceleration. So that's V squared over R. Okay. So F would equal 3mg plus 3m V squared over R. Now I have to solve now I know omega, I don't know V, but I know V is equal to omega R. So V would equal um uh R, R in this case is L, so L square roots of 6 fifths G over L. Okay, so V squared would be um, L squared times 6 fifths G over L. That will cancel, so that's equal to 6 fifths GL. And so my force here would have to be 3MG plus 3M, plugging this into here times 6 fifths GL and then the R here is um, again it's the radius of the circular path he's taking it's also L so that L cancels so that's 3 mg plus uh, 18 fifths mg uh, 15 what's that 33 over 15 mg Okay, and that's the force, and it'll have to be upward to keep him in, on the circular path. If it's not enough force, then the bug's not going to stay on that circular path. It's going to fly off. Okay, hope you found that helpful. Um, I'll, leave, I'll see you all in the next video. Thanks for watching the video, guys. Please leave a comment, like, or subscribe below to catch up more of the content. And see any links below. I offer free homework help on uh, Twitch and Discord. See you guys in the next video.